Uh, the question has surfaced from time to time as to whether or not uh, there is some connection between the General Conference and uh, its involvement with Sunday laws and that kind of thing. Also, strange rumors that have been floating around in the Internet for a number of years, actually, that uh, the Pope has contacted the United States President, who has contacted the General Conference President about national Sunday laws and all of this. I want to tell you that this is absolutely incorrect, totally false. Somebody somewhere imagines certain things and puts it on the internet and then people believe what they read. Understand that yes, national Sunday laws will come, persecution will come, but nothing of that sort is in the pipeline at the present time, nothing that we have understood. But nothing of that sort is in the pipeline at the present time, nothing that we have understood. Uh, the question has surfaced from time to time as to whether or not uh, there is some connection between the General Conference and uh, its involvement with Sunday laws and that kind of thing. Also, strange rumors that have been floating around in the Internet for a number of years, actually, that. Uh, the Pope has contacted the United States President, who has contacted the General Conference President about national Sunday laws and all of this. I want to tell you that this is absolutely incorrect, totally false. Somebody somewhere imagines certain things and puts it on the Internet, and then people believe what they read. I have the great privilege of reading a letter a letter which you will find of great interest. It has at the top of its letterhead the White House, Washington. I send warm greetings to those attending the 59th session of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Throughout history, faith has shaped our philosophies, our perspectives, and our lives. As we face the challenges and opportunities of this unique moment in history, may faith move us to unite in common cause. May faith move us to unite in common cause. Unite in common cause. I wish you all the best for a wonderful event. Barack Obama, President of the United States. I'm honored to join all the members of the Seventh day Adventist Church as you look back on your first 150 years and look forward to many more. From its beginnings, America has recognized the contribution of faith. We do not impose any one religion. Instead, we welcome all religions. We do not prescribe any prayer. We welcome all prayers. We respect every creed. We honor the diversity of our country and the deep convictions of our people. This is the tradition of our nation. That's what makes us Americans. It's an honor to address the members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I am flattered and humbled to have this chance to speak to such a vibrant and active group of people. Our religious freedom is a cornerstone of this great nation, and I personally appreciate the work of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in promoting religious freedom, not just here, but around the world. I am particularly proud to join you in supporting the Workplace Religious Freedom Act. With faith and strong families and the freedom to allow faith to prosper, our people and our nation will be ready to embrace the future. We'll be ready to embrace the future. And what future is that, friends? Why do these leaders speak favorably about the current Seventh-day Adventist Church? It is because our church leaders have turned their backs on the commission that God gave us in the days of our pioneers. The reason that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is not persecuted today, and instead is spoken of favourably, is because our leaders have rejected the three angels' messages, and entered into ecumenical relationships with not only the leaders of the world, but with Babylon itself, the fallen churches. SDA leaders are actively uniting with the papacy, the first beast of Revelation 13. They are actively uniting with America, 
the second beast of Revelation 13. They are actively uniting with the kings of the earth of Revelation 17. And they are actively uniting with the fallen Protestant churches of Babylon. But nothing of that sort is in the pipeline at the present time, nothing that we have understood. Don't spread rumors. Don't spread inaccurate information. Spread the truth. The day of worship becomes one other than the seventh day Sabbath. And in fact, the mark of the beast would be the worship of God on any other day than that particular day. And in fact, the mark of the beast would be the worship of God on any other day than that particular day. So why would Ted Wilson say there is nothing in the pipeline regarding the Sunday law? Just put the pieces together, friends. Our leaders want to keep the people fast asleep so as to accept the unity the world and our church is pushing for. And what is this religious liberty that they keep preaching about? Friends, this is a trap to unite the churches. The kind of religious liberty they are talking about is the kind that will not allow us to expose that mother of harlots, the Roman Catholic Church, and her daughters, the fallen Protestant churches. It is the kind that will not allow you to expose false relig religion and try and convert someone to the truth. It is the kind of religious liberty that tells you to just accept people as they are and not tell them the truth about the real gospel. Take a look at this picture of the International Religious Liberty Association's 8th World Congress. You can see Ganun Diop on the left, the Adventist leader you see in so many other pictures. Ganun Diop is not only the General Secretary of the Conference of Secretaries of Christian World Communions, that annual ecumenical meeting of world religions with the Pope at the Vatican, he is also the current chairman of the International Religious Liberty Association, an association led by a wide mixture of people, from American statesmen to lawyers, professors, and leaders of various ecumenical groups. So our leaders are working alongside civil leaders and religious leaders from other faiths to promote so-called religious liberty. And what are they ultimately working towards? Unity. It is even spelled out for us clearly on this news article regarding the Conference of Secretaries of Christian World Communions. It says, The World Evangelical Alliance has introduced its new leadership structure to heads of global denominations in the course of the annual meeting of the Conference of Secretaries of Christian World Communions. According to the new structure, the executive branch now consists of eight people, namely the General Secretary, four deputies, and three chief officers. Each of the latter is responsible for structure and organization, public relations work, or for finances, respectively. The Deputy General Secretaries are no longer generalists, as the General Secretary has been, rather they are specialists in the area for which they are responsible, namely in the following four areas. And the first one, as we can see, is theology, theological training, ecumenism, and dialogue and religious freedom. And who is the current General Secretary of this ecumenical group? Ganun Diop, a high-level leader in the SDA Church. And what is the purpose of this group? Promoting Christian unity with the papacy. Great deception is in our midst, friends. Our church leaders have rejected the three angels' messages, and destruction is coming to the corporate-led Adventist church, as well as all the fallen churches of Babylon. And we need to be wide awake and studying God's word for ourselves.